the harsh reality, which is going to be, this isn't a great answer. I don't, I'm not going to be able to, you know, too lazy to hold the camera. You have to get a little tripod. <laughs> um, but, but you're not going to, you're not going to get the, the truth. And the, I think the word truth should mean something, you know, even no matter what it feels like. But I'm just saying that I think there's a real power in recognizing that I can control it because I'll know what it really is. And if you keep making it magical, you'll never control it. You can't control magic. Exactly. You know. Well, that's the thing. I was reading Jonathan Livingston Siegel again, and the first chapter is all about he's learning aer aerodynamics, and he's controlling his body, and his spiritual journey is entirely by f learning physics. There's not magic in it. It's like, hey, I can pull them, and then they're shaped more like a falcon. I dive faster and stuff, and uh, and you can control the universe more well, if you accept well, reality and physics right. instead of going. And then at one point, I got so good at skateboarding, I teleported somewhere. Well, it's like Scientology, right? There's a lot of you know will to power in Scientology. Okay, it's really yeah, about making obviously. yourself. If you, you feel like a doctor, you can be a doctor. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Sure. If you feel like you're incompetent, you're not going to be able to do it. So it's that idea that sometimes confidence is your best friend. Because it'll enable you to do what you need to do instead of worrying about doing what you have to do, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's a way of channeling your energy, so to speak, right? Tremendous value in that in terms of getting control of your psychology and understanding when you need to be confident and when you need to be careful, yeah. okay? And the, what do you need the volcano for? What do you need the fucking aliens for? Yeah. You know, what do you need the bullshit, you know, tied onto that? And, and there, it was only contrived for the purpose of getting the tax-free status. Right, so here you have this guy like L. Ron Hubbard's an asshole, but obviously he, he had some insight into human psychology, and so take the value of that, you know, this mind mm -hmm. over matter kind of thing, mm -hmm. this mind over lizard, or however you want to describe it, and, and take the value of that and just get rid of the rubbish, get rid of this volcano and aliens and bullshit. You know? Yeah, you well, he didn't think people would buy that, evidently. Well, I don't think it's just about buying it. I think the idea was, it's like I said, he wanted a tax write-off. But he off. didn't really believe this stuff. He was just a science fiction guy, it seems like. Well, I'm just saying, but that my point is... But he is, believed in the my system. My point is, is we know it's a contrivance. It's like a metaphor. We know that's the junk. And I'm just yeah. saying, whether Hubbard put it there for a tax write-off or he put it there for some, or to make it popular, or whatever his excuse for putting it on there, I'm just saying, just separate the two things. Separate the value from the crap. Well, I think one of the values of... Uh, of Scientology is just that they have this idea that you have ideas in your head that are that you're battling. You know, there's this excuse of these aliens have come, and they, and so when you have these crazy or self-critical or whatever kinds of ideas that are contradicting, it's a way to interpret that as someone else. And you know, it's kind of like when the crazy person's dog tells him to kill people, son of Sam. You know, maybe he could have thought that's an alien in my head. Maybe he wouldn't have to, he'd still be well, batshit yeah, crazy, I mean, but he wouldn't have killed anybody. The point is, is, just don't take it. Literally. But that's what it all is. No, it's no, about attacking right. those things and getting them out of your acting career. Right. <laughs> well, well, whatever you want to you know, break it down. That's why it like, works with actors, I think, because th those are the kinds of things that come right in the middle of a scene and make you a bad actor. And by learning how to karate chop ninja those out of your mind, you also could become kind of vacant brained, like uh, you know some of them are. But you actually will act at your peak because you won't have that clutter when you're trying to focus well, on some saying, goal. Right, you know, well, especially in acting, just because you're supposed to, you know, you have to play a psychological game with yourself. So that's what it's about is psychology. So I'm just saying that there's tools yeah. and just use the tools. Take them for where their value yeah. is and quit, you know, I just wish people wouldn't keep demanding that it have some golden goose at the end or there be some happily ever after or some other bullshit that makes this mean something yeah. to them. The value should be in the tools and that should be enough, yeah. you know. And well, that's what I think. If, if, if I, and I kind of am thinking of changing my attitude because I've had an attitude for a long time now with the Internet that you can't really change people and stuff. And so it's like, okay, I'll just get what I can get in from it. I'll try to take the good out of Scientology or whatever weird thing. And, uh, and it's pretty expansive. There's a lot of stuff I've been able to, things that are even abhorrent that you can do that with. Um, and I'm thinking of turning more towards like, well, no, how do you educate people? And I go back to the idea I've had the whole time, which is, how can this help if I'm being self-indulgent like that? And it's not working per se, but the idea was, people really need to learn how to think 
you know, and emotionally as well, even if thinking emotionally means, you know, rising above it, not letting it worry you, same thing, you have to add your emotions up, and then you're going to add up intellectual emotions like curiosity, and eureka, and I discovered something, and I solved this puzzle, and the desire to solve a puzzle, you have to teach people how to think better, and I don't feel like I think better in one sense, but in another sense, I think I do, I don't think I get to better conclusions, but I think I go on a path that's more logical. Right. And I know when I'm in a wrong more, conclusion more, how I got there. More logical is, is part of the concept, though. Is what, the only way you do that, though, is you first have to understand how your brain works because your brain doesn't work logically. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Your intuition is not logical. Yeah, no, no. Okay, your first impression is not logical. So you have to recognize that you have this bullshit and that you have to... That's why you need to get to the base of it, the root of it, and understand, okay, I have this ego... I have this other stuff that's created an agenda, a culture that's, you know, I have been brainwashed by my culture. I yeah. have been brainwashed by certain notions of comfort. All the metaphors. Right. That we and so you with. understand the psychology of the machine first, then you can start cleaning it of the, of the bullshit. Because yeah. so much of what we do is always trying to make the, the, we're making the world, the reality, fit the round hole we yeah. have in our head. And yeah. we're just saying, I, no, I don't accept square pegs, you've got to make it round. And that's the bullshit part. You know. So the funny thing, though, is this is almost like in the self-help area, which goes into the, um, you know, the, the the people that want to be these spiritual teachers and breatharianism, where there's there some spiritual dynamics or whatever, the, a self-help thing, or maybe it's yoga or the New Christ Church that does rock and roll. I mean, it's like this self-help industry, which is like the last thing that I, you know, I don't have a desire to be big in the Tony Robbins, you know, and yet it's almost like there's a reason people are asking for that because they do need the answer. I don't think that industry does very well. The people that are really into it, they're well, all like over the map. I for just, one I thing, even if one of those books is great, they have seven others that are just making, you know, every crayon scribbled I, I over each other. it's a bad other. gilding of the lily. It's, it's how, you know, I don't know how to put it, but it's, it's, you know, yeah, they're just putting crap on top of something and weighting it down so much it's lost all its value. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. so much glitter and bullshit that's tied to those philosophies that, mm -hmm. again, they've missed well, the Well, people want to be the told value, their lives gets better no, when but, they do but, it. But, but, you know, the value is in understanding, you know, this, how your brain works. You know, the deconstruction. Yes. You know, and getting to this whole determinism But thing. people want to know they're going to get rich, like the secret from it. Thing. Well, I know, but that's the part that once, you, once you've dissected your brain and realize your brain is just this robotic machine that's running, mm -hmm. then it's going to be impossible for you to start worrying about who's winning the lottery. Because, you know, then you're automatically going to understand it. But what are you going to do, lie to him? Your brain is doing the same thing my brain is. No, you don't have to. I'm just saying once you... The ego gets killed as soon as... But it's you, like, do this, and you'll get well, rich, and then when you do it, you know, don't care anymore. But you, you only care about getting rich because of your ego, because you're an individual, all right? I'm just saying, as soon as, you, as soon as you understand, as soon as you start understanding that your brain is not like, like feet, I mean, making a distinction yeah. between my feet and your feet would, be, body, would right. be idiotic, right? Because there's nothing special about feet. A foot is a foot is a foot. Well, a brain is a brain is a brain is a brain. So then you understand that it really doesn't matter whether you're happy or I'm happy. It doesn't matter whether you win the lottery or I win the lottery. You understand that simple concept. Then you break down all that, I, what do I expect from this? What do I demand from this philosophy? And all you demand from it is the truth. See, here's the thing uh, that we argue about with Nietzsche. Which is, see, Nietzsche was saying that what if... See, here's the thing. Let's say we know a way people could find more of the truth. Okay? And... The problem is, the people want to be told that that'll make their life better. And what if knowing the truth makes their life unbearable, right? Which kind of comes to your analysis in antinatalism. You analyze human life. I blame humans and kind of stop there, but I see why you go into how, you know, brutal nature is. And that's, you know, and so you analyze and find this truth, and it doesn't make life uh, easier necessarily. And yet... I still want people to go through those processes, and I think it will make our culture better if people went through that process. But they want to hear that God's going to, you know, well, grant their were, I think, secret. I think they were still arguing too, from a point of view that somehow you needed to this special knowledge. You need to be one of them, one of we. You know, he always did this we yeah. stuff. You know, to be, and so he was talking about what's good for them. You mean Nelson you know, Hubbard again? He had no. I mean uh, Nietzsche. Oh Nietzsche. Okay, okay. There was a standard for the people, and there was a standard for the elite. Okay, we, the philosophers, can have this conversation 
but the regular you know, right. human class can't. Yeah, well, there okay. might be some bad so elitism the same, in there, but... Same, you yeah. know, the same thing Kant did and the rest of these people is they all talked as if, oh, human civilization will come to an end if we talk about the truth, because humans can't take the truth. So they were basically doing the you-can't-handle-the-truth argument in the sense that humans need these right. guideposts. Well, I would dislike Nietzsche if I agreed with that. right out. They need with what big you say signs with big letters and bold yeah. type. They can't do the smart stuff like us. Yeah. They can't read the text. And I'm saying, no, that's the bullshit part here. Everybody can understand politics. Everybody can understand the law. Everybody can understand all this shit. It's just that we have forced a contrived hierarchy. Doctors talk Latin for a reason, Right. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, okay, all these But I don't think Nietzsche is that kind of elitist because, one, he was felt elitist. He, he exercised his elitism over the other philosophers. And he didn't say they couldn't answer the problems. Often he would praise them in this and that that he thought they had right in their style or whatever. He usually said they had a problem because there was some emotional thing, like... You know, kind of Freudian. Still, kind of, Freud still, stole from him, like, he's only believing he's in this still, politics because his mom about, beat him kind of still, shit. He still talked about society as if it was a colony of ants. Yeah, he didn't okay. like for it, and democracy and, and hated it. he was it. something else, okay? He, but thought, is that, he thought of himself as a praying mantis, yeah. and the human race was ants, okay? He thought he was something special. No, I think he went thought he had gone to the, to the side, but here's the thing that I've struggled with with him, is that... Um, you know, he's he was against democracy. He didn't think democracy would work. But he thought kings were corrupt too. I mean, there's a big pessimism there. He's not. I don't remember well, anything he said he would work. But what do you think about Bureau. that? Because I am. He was against everything. Right. Okay. He was a big critic. Right. No, he's he did take he the built, curmudgeonly he side. He nothing. Okay. Well, the I only, disagree the only thing, with that. Everything he validated was evolution. He but didn't validate but what about this question? Thing. Just take this question as a topic. Democracy. I mean, because I'm very pro-democratic, but now I'm getting older, and I'm starting to see why it kind of depends how that democracy is formed. And it's still an open question of whether one can be formed well. If I had well. a choice, if I had a choice between I get to choose the dictator, okay, and democracy, I will go with let me choose the dictator. Well, what if it can't I be would, you, though? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's how I'm looking at it personally. I'm saying I'd rather have the benevolent dictator than the democracy. Because but there's the democracy, no way to choose one. Well, I know. Well, I'm just saying. They get corrupt. I, I'm not, no, 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 no. Einstein's not getting corrupt. He would. No, he wouldn't. Well, I, I, I can trust. I think I can trust. I can trust Einstein as much as I can trust me. I'm pretty damn sure of that. Okay. And just, just from, just from reading Einstein. Well, but Einstein was a pacifist, but ended up. Um, not being a pacifist because he realized you got to do something about the well, Nazis. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but I'll, it's I room say, for a big mistake if he's the world dictator for a few years. I'm Maybe we'd no, have Nazis but, but in we, power. But we know the process, okay? We know Einstein's not going to do anything except do it carefully. Oh, right? Well, he's a good example. Well, okay. well, I'm just saying, but he's, because not exactly, I trust. he's not an example of a failure, is all I'm saying. Yeah. And he's, a, he's an example of somebody who's going to look for the right answer based on some sort of bigger picture than what does Einstein think. Okay. For sure, uh, yeah, is, no, and that's how come he was a pacifist well, and why saying, he was big enough to I'm, not be one well, afterwards. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that's why I would trust yeah. Einstein over democracy. If right. I, if I had to choose between the two, I'd say I'd go with Einstein before I go with a democracy because a democracy is automatic dilution, right? You're automatically diluting the judgment right. with the idiots. Okay? But the only way we've ever really done that organically is the guy with the big army put himself well, in I'm place. Well, I'm just saying, quite obviously... So what's I, the system... I'm did? just saying, obviously I can't have it the way I would want it. Yeah. I'm just saying, if I had the God power and I could just choose the Einstein, I'd rather choose the Einstein. Obviously we have to go with democracy because there's no other rational choice. Yeah. There's no other rational choice in a there's world no better where one. some asshole is going to pick the yeah. dictator. Well, in that world, there's no other choice but to go with democracy. Right. I agree with that, and I also agree with it be, uh, in the sense that because there's really infinite forms of democracy. Like, if we had an IRV-based democracy and that's the only difference, this country would be different. So there's a lot of forms, of ways of setting up the well, game. We're saying, saying it should be a board democracy. game where everybody starts equal. Well, well, yeah, okay. so there's still a lot of board games. Just put yeah, a couple of test questions on yeah. the ballot, you know, and yeah, you've already improved well, your democracy. That's the other thing. So you, yeah, I, that's the other thing. I used to be totally against having any test questions, and things like taking the vote from felons I'm against. But I am getting a lot closer to, why not? Why uh, People that want to come and be in this country have to take a little quiz. Yeah, I don't think why not take a quiz to be on a jury? There's no reason or, to presume a bigotry, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no reason to presume a bigotry in the fact that you're going to filter people 
for a minimum amount of competence. Yeah. I mean, come on, being a citizen is a huge responsibility. If you believe in, you know, angels and reptilians, well, maybe you shouldn't be deciding our defense budget. See, I would do, I could see something like this, like kids start, start um, voting local before they get to even take part in national elections. Maybe there's a 10-year graduated schedule, and to go to the next level, you have to have voted in your yeah, county, and then your state, and then your so on, even, even and learn something about, because it's even, too even, easy. Even if you only gave them a percentage vote as a collective, you know, even if they were only 10% of the vote as a collective, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the whole election, you mean, yeah. it would still be valuable. Like, you give 12th graders... You know, this much weight to their vote. Uh, yeah. You know, sophomores. That'd be this cool because you could go down this to ten year olds that way. You could go yeah. down to just zero cool. percent or point oh oh one, but they yeah. got their say. They all and you'd know. also know what was coming in ten years. Right, and you, and the, their opinion would be voiced. It would be yeah. known instead of being unknown. Yeah. Part of what I have up against national and even international politics is, is that it's such a celebrity thing. And with the 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 blogging, and I was doing the blogging a lot for years when it, it got big. You know, these it's all about this celebrity, and so it's so easy to not really make a decision and think you're politically informed. And I used to see the judgment between if people uh, knew any international or what was going on internationally, but then I realized, holy fuck, I know way too much about all of these failed Ron Paul types or Jerry Brown people I've liked and stuff than I did about who has been the mayor of my town spending $300 million a year the last 10 years. And... Um, so I could see that as a way to have a farm system, but I also could see comp a lot more competency tests. I mean, I think totally judgment-free democracy is maybe just a good first experiment. And after that, um, we're well, going to have to have judgment. I think once you franchise people, okay, once you give people the realization they're going to have a definite congressman, and it's going to be somebody they voted for. The geographic okay? part. Well, I'm just saying, they, they voted for this guy. Yeah. Okay, he's going to know their name. Yeah. Okay? Your name is going to be on his list in Congress, okay? This is your guy, okay? It's not some guy you didn't want to get elected. Right, it's they have constituencies. Some actually voted for. Right, they still have a I constituency. Think, I think you bring back 25% of the voters, okay, and people will be interested. Yeah. If they know that it's not a feudal system, They'll be interested. Yeah. Well, for one, because they could feudal. follow. If this is a feudal system, right? I mean, I didn't have. You don't have a choice in these elections. You got shit for a choice, and that's the truth. Yeah. You got shit or crap, and in, in a system where you got to choose between shit and crap, I mean, if you're just choosing how big, how whether you got Hitler or Mussolini coming at you, who wants to be in that game? Yeah, no, it's, it makes perfect okay, sense to so say, say, like once, the Carlin thing once, of I can't vote. Once you make this stuff mean something, where you know you're actually changing who's in Congress. Yeah. You know, once people have that power, then they're going to want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to figure out how to, I mean, because we've been through it with the IRV thing, and it's very hard to try to communicate that to people and why well, it's interesting and worth signing petitions or any well, of that it is, so far. But I, 